JS 11 weather first. Good evening. I'm meteorologist Colleen Peterson. It is hot outside right now. We're at 94 90 degrees at Bowman, but when we factor in some of that humidity, this is what it feels like. It feels like 98 101 is what it feels like outside here in Jasper. Unfortunately, that heat is going to continue for the majority of the southeast and Midwest over the next five plus days. We have mid 90 degree weather. WH 11 news at 630 starts right now. This Father's Day weekend has been plagued by gun violence. Multiple people injured by gunfire in Michigan, Texas, Maryland, Massachusetts, and Ohio. At least three people lost their lives. Thank you for joining us here at 630. I'm Alex Dieterer. According to the Gun Violence Archives, there have been 224 mass shootings so far this year. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest on these shootings. An investigation now underway in Rochester Hills, Michigan, after a shooter opened fire Saturday afternoon at a splash pad park, injuring nine people. Unfortunately, in my five years as being county executive, this is now the second mass shooting. We're getting all too good at this, and, and I'm disgusted by it. The youngest victim, a four-year-old boy. His eight-year-old brother and their mom also hurt, both in critical condition. The oldest victim, a 78-year-old man, who was shot in the abdomen, according to police. Under no circumstance in this country, particularly in Rochester Hills, uh, should fathers be spending Father's Day in a hospital. Police have identified the suspected gunman as 42-year-old Michael William Nash. They say he apparently died by suicide and had no connection to any of the victims. In another shooting Saturday evening, this one in Texas, the Juneteenth celebrations turning deadly when gunfire erupted at a park in Round Rock. Police say an altercation broke out shortly before 11 p.m. During that altercation, someone produced a gun and began to fire. Multiple victims were hit. Unfortunately, we do have two deceased on scene. We do not have a suspect in custody. Meanwhile, early Sunday morning, authorities in Methuen, Massachusetts, say seven people were shot during a pop-up party that was organized through social media. They say an eighth person suffered serious head injuries trying to get away from the scene. While these spontaneous car club meetups, they generally do not escalate to this type of violence, our policy has been and will continue to be to take law enforcement action wherever appropriate to discourage this activity from occurring in the first place. No arrests have been made in the case. And in Maryland, police are searching for the alleged suspect who opened fire at a sporting event held at a high school Saturday morning, killing one man and injuring a five-year-old child. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. And in Cincinnati, five people were injured, one critically injured after a shooting at a park. Police responded around 6.30 yesterday evening to the shooting. In total, five people were shot, ranging in age from 24 to 46 years old. One person is in critical condition, while the other four are expected to survive. Eyewitnesses say the shooting happened during the annual Madisonville Day event, which celebrates the Madisonville neighborhood in Cincinnati. Here in Louisville, we've slowly seen gun violence fall across the metro. Still, more than 200 shootings have happened this year alone. According to the Louisville Gun Violence Dashboard, 239 people have been victims of 206 shooting incidents since the beginning of this year. Since 2021, the number of shootings has fallen more than 42 percent, though. Young people continue to be the most impacted by gun violence. Nearly 54 percent of all victims are between the ages of 18 and 34. This month, advocates met to discuss ways to end the gun violence. One option was to address a, address a, lack, a lack of resources given to neighborhoods, particularly mental health resources for kids. It just happened over the weekend. A lot of those kids is affected by that, but they don't have nobody to talk to. And then with them not having nobody to talk to, can also grow a thought that they think that this is a way to protect themselves or they think this is a way to survive. Other solutions focused on preventing gun violence instead of intervening after a shooting and giving kids the space and resources to participate in activities like sports or the arts in hopes of deterring them from violence. 
Well, a happy Father's Day to all the father figures watching today. Some dads today spent their day a truly Louvillian way. Well, that is, of course, at the racetrack. Families spent their day at Churchill Downs, where kids of all ages sat with dad to enjoy some snacks, some sun, and of course, some horse racing. For the Angles, who traveled all the way from Chicago, Father's Day at the Churchill Downs could be a new tradition. The tradition started with my daughter, my wife, and I, and my son-in-law going to Arlington Park every Father's Day. And then my dad, when he could come into town, and then Arlington closed, and my daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter treated us to come down here for uh, you know a day at the races on Father's Day. If you and Dan didn't have time to stop by Churchill today, Spring Meet Racing picks back up at Churchill Wednesday at 12:45. And we've all heard the saying, I want to be like dad, but a firefighting trio in Louisville are taking the phrase to the next level. Jose Alonzo and photojournalist Aspen Hester show us how two brothers grew up to be a first responder just like their father. We're at Louisville Fire Station number 11, and this is a special spot for a firefighter major who's been in the department for decades and has two sons following his footsteps. Major Brian Stotts has been a part of the Louisville Fire Department for 23 years and is the father of seven children. Through the years, he's been able to watch his sons, Caleb and Oliver, also become firefighters for the city. While reflecting on this picture of the trio sitting on a fire truck, Major Stotts offers this advice. Live out, you know, and witness to them what you want from them when they're older because they're going to observe it, they're going to watch it, and they're going to learn from it and they're gonna to try to model that. And, um, and it could be a positive, it could be a negative. Major Stott says it takes a lot to be a first responder, but he's glad to offer his son's guidance as they continue forward in their careers like himself. In Louisville, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11, on your side.